Hey folks, Fino here. I tend to be a bit crude with these intros, so I figured I'd class it up with some poetry for once. Quote, I'll take you to the candy shop. Boy, one taste of what I got. I'll have you spending all you got. Keep going till you hit the spot. Whoa. Whoa indeed, it's Mysterious Heroin X Alter, who I'm just gonna call Nerd Alter to save some breath. Uh, speaking of saving breath, second time recording this today. First recording turned out pretty good, but then, uh, yeah. The saved file got corrupted in a freak accident, so yeah. Great mood. I'm in a great mood right now. But enough about my problems. This quick berserker is a real oddball, and her quirks led to her being one of the lowest ranked 5 stars for a long time. Uh, but her star has risen since then, and we're gonna find out why, starting from her skills. Skill 1 is Infinite Chocolate. This is a heal amp, and a heal. At max rank, it's a short 5 turn cooldown, and the amplifier is a substantial 50%. This means her 2k heal becomes a 3k heal with no external input. But despite its generosity, this skill isn't terribly impactful for one simple reason. Healing has fairly low value on Berserkers. In Epic of Renan and Lost Belt, Zerks have a tendency to explode from random enemy crits that happen suspiciously often. When you're getting one or two shot, you want a defense buff or something that mitigates damage entirely. Healing is good and dandy, but only if you're alive. On release, skill 2 is Intuition. Which sucks. Luckily Nerd Alter gets a strengthening quest which turns it into a 3 turn quick buff that also has on-demand stars. This change lets her draw on both a quick buff from this, and a standard attack buff from her third skill. Damage buff categories are multiplicative, so that's a really good thing. This buff is a big part of what pulled her out of Garbo tier. Skill 3 is King's Invisible Hand. This is a very odd skill that's a team-wide charisma buff, but also a targeted star absorption debuff against a single ally. Nominally the reduction is 100%, but in practice you can still see that ally get stars. The problem stems from a game mechanic where three cards in any given hand are randomly given base weights of 50, 20, and 20. Apparently, this applies after King's Invisible Hand, so if you're unlucky, a target can still get crit stars. To salt the wound, Nerd Alter being a Berserker gives her atrociously low absorption, so when a Weaver card slips through the cracks, it's gonna suck up all the stars like a box office bomb. There is an upside though. The reduction is still a very substantial one, and it gets a de facto upgrade once we get the back button. You see, on JP we get to see where stars go in advance, which lets us mulligan the result with any skill that redistributes them. That includes King's Invisible Hand. In other words, you get a lot more information to work with, thus making it more effective. Nerd Alter's Noble Phantasm is Cross Caliber. This is a single target nuke that boasts a massive damage modifier, which tends to be the case for a lot of quick NPs. It also has an anti-saber buff. Not saber face, saber. The entire class. This means she can actually outperform archers in this role. You also have to consider that archers have a slight but inherent attack penalty due to their class, while berserkers have a bonus instead. The damage modifier goes from 1200 to 1600% between NP1 and 2, so you really want that second copy if you can get it. All in all a very strong part of her kit. Nerd Alter's loadout goes in a number of strange directions that lets me really turn up the memes, but maybe we'll find something useful along the way. King's Invisible Hand lets you kneecap one of your allies and take their stars, but there's a small problem. I mean besides the whole 50-20-20 thing. You have two teammates. Well it'd be real nice if the other one gimped themselves. Enter Assassin of Shinjuku. His third skill generates up to 20 stars, and it also tanks his own absorption. Having both skills available lets you redistribute stars twice. Either you pop both in the same turn to channel stars onto Nerd Altar, or you hold one in reserve to increase the odds of getting two very strong hands. Any attacker works to round out this team, but the most enticing option for me is Atalanta Alter, or as I like to call her, Nekopara. She's another quick-oriented berserker with crit synergy. Her 2q2b deck also gives you consistent quick chaining, while giving you that extra buster card so you can cash in your stars for damage. This team has almost no defensive power, but it's well equipped for a face race, something to consider if you pull the short straw in Shinjuku. Next up, we've got the boring-ass team you're all expecting, or close enough. The reason why I'd recommend Waver Scotty over Double Scotty is that Berserkers are very fragile, and she can die before you pull off three consecutive cross calibers. Waver's defense buff can make all the difference between getting one-shotted and surviving an extra turn. Him giving 50% meter also makes him a respectable combo extender, though not to the same degree as Scotty. And the crit buff is very nice given that Nerd Alter can generate a respectable number of stars by herself. This one's a pretty mean budget team. Hans provides a lot of things that Nerd Alter really wants. Stars, crit, and a defense buff. Infinite Chocolate combos with the health regen on his NP, and with his defense buff you can actually take advantage of this. Just keep in mind that Hans is very fragile without his NP, so you'll want to give him a craft essence that lets him pop it on turn 1. The other member of this trio is Billy the Kid. 
Between her own star generation and King's invisible hand, Nerdalter can enable big belly turns where he pops all his crit amps and blows everyone away. This combo's cheap and easy to get, and it seems pretty effective too. Not bad. Nerdalter has a peculiar bond CE called Dark Knight Kun. If she's on the field and equipping it, this makes enemy sabers take 20% more damage. Let's say you have a friend who likes nerdy girls as much as you do. You can mine forces and deploy two of them on the same lineup. Congrats. You have a moderately bad team. To round this out, I'd recommend a Rosh and Green Sita with Kaleidoscope. This team is jank as hell, so you'll want to remove two waves from the encounter and minimize Nerd Alter's exposure. If you can kill Wave 2 with Phobos Catastrophe, you'll have a shitload of stars going into the boss wave. With these stars, Nerd's offensive buffs, and Dark Knight Kun, you'll do some serious damage. You might be able to follow up with a big NP turn. Cross Calibre already has anti-saber properties, so this'll really fuck him up. Moving on to Craft Essences, Sunday in Summer gives a combination of quick, NP damage, and starting charge, all of which you can exploit, especially in combination with the meta supports. This one's a freebie in the Seraph event, which we'll get later this year. Imaginary Around gives a large quick bonus, Dumplings Over Flower gives quick performance and NP damage. Let's see, Proto Arthur fans are going to end up with a few copies of Cafe Camelot, so I may as well recommend that. It gives defense and increased healing received. If you're feeling particularly fatalistic, you can use Wandering Tales of Shana O as an insurance policy. It gives a party-wide quick buff on the death of its carrier. Finally, let's round things out with Wolves of Mibu. It's a freebie from Guda Guda 2, and it has a combination of Buster, Quick, and Star Income. Much like Dante's, Nerd Alter is an investment. She kinda sucks now due to a combination of intuition, game mechanics, and fights that are fairly hostile to Berserkers. But with her buff and the introduction of the back button, the value of her kit rises dramatically. Combined with her inherently strong cards, these changes will make her shine brightly down the road. But right now it's a Merlin meta, so she'll have to keep a low profile. That's all I got. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, tell a friend. I also stream on Twitch every weekend, 3pm Pacific Standard Time. Uh, usually FGO on Friday and Sunday, and something strange on Saturday. See you there.